Whenever Batman's brought up, there's always a good amount of debate that gets talked about when it comes to the films. Some say Tim Burton nailed the tone, while others think that Christopher Nolan's are simply masterpieces. Then there's those that say that the Batman films begin and end with the animated series. I'm not going to touch upon the cartoon, but I am going to give you my favorite and least favorite Batman films of all time. Let's start with the worst. If I were to show a fresh faced audience the 1966 Batman the movie starring Adam West, I think it'd be met with mixed reactions with, what the f did I just watch and did he really just use shark repellent to take out that shark? It is fun to see all the villains joining forces here though with the Riddler, the Joker and the Penguin teaming up alongside the sexy Lee Merriweather as Catwoman. Plus Burt Ward as Robin tossing out cheesy puns every other sentence is a fun inclusion but it can't match anything in the newer installments except for maybe bat nipples. <sighs> No! This is arguably worse than the last movie on my list because it came after the brilliant Tim Burton films. Yes, Batman Forever was bad too, but this took it to another level. Director Joel Schumacher and George Clooney have apologized for this disaster multiple times. That doesn't change the fact that it still exists and it's a commercialized joke. Terrible Mr. Freeze puns. Bat credit cards, ice skating, fighting, dinosaur sliding, bat nipples, and an all-around butchering of the source material. Make this a bat-tastrophe! Like, catastrophe. Did that work? I don't care. Uma Thurman was, was nice to look at, at least, so... That's something. Joel Schumacher gets a lot of heat for Batman and Robin, but I think he should have been blasted just as hard for Batman Forever. This followed the Tim Burton Batman Returns, one of the best of the franchise if you ask me. Which you didn't, but I'm telling you anyways. Burton and Keaton both left, so what we get is a totally different atmosphere filled with neon lighting, tilted cameras, and some of the worst acting Tommy Lee Jones will ever deliver. I enjoyed Carrie's Riddler to a degree, but he was in the wrong film for that act to work, and he definitely overstayed his welcome. Val Kilmer wasn't a bad Batman by any means either, but he was thrown into an unwinnable situation. I was a bit bad hurt when I found out they were rebooting Batman from scratch. I was hoping Michael Keaton would return somehow to retain his former glory as the superior Dark Knight. You heard me. Alas, we got Christian Bale in a new trilogy that started a bit rocky for me. An over-reliance on shaky cam and a muddy looking Gotham didn't help. There are plenty of Bale supporters, but his voice as Batman was utterly ridiculous. I'm sorry. Thankfully, it's much improved in the follow-up films. I like had a spastic. What the hell that was? When Batman made his big theatrical debut in 1989, people went batshit crazy for him. Michael Keaton owned the role as both Bruce Wayne and the Dark Knight, and Tim Burton brought his signature style to the film, a style that would later be abused in many films, but it was still fresh here. The showstopper was, of course, Jack Nicholson playing the love-to-hate Joker, a performance that many said would never be topped. Mm. This is one of those movies that really whoosh, splits its fan base right down the middle, with some people praising the follow-up and the final conclusion to the Nolan trilogy, and others merely despising it. I've seen lung cancer patients with less holes, yet I still enjoyed the final chapter immensely. Tom Hardy was brilliant as Bane, and the action was ramped way up from previous iterations. On certain days, I could still argue that Batman Returns is the superior Batman picture. A perfect Batmobile design, a better acted Dark Knight, great supporting villains from Pfeiffer and DeVito, the best soundtrack of the series, and a really strong costume and set design. The Dark Knight. I know, it's not original. I'm not really sure what you expected from me here. This is just a list of one guy's opinions. My, mine, I pretend I'm a guy. And uh, I encourage you to do the same. I feel like it nails pretty much everything. The action is much tighter than begins. Bale calmed the f*** down on the stupid voice. 
the muddy look was replaced with a bluer color palette, the soundtrack is epic, and oh yes, Heath Ledger owned as the Joker. My only hang up, and I've bitched about this time and again, is replacing Katie Holmes with Maggie Gyllenhaal. If you're gonna kill the goddamn character, just kill Katie Holmes! Well, there it is. That's, that's my list, the superior list. I'd love to hear yours, though, and some reasons why you put them in the order you did. And don't even think about putting the mask of the phantasm on there. I warned you. This is live action, people. No cartoons. Yes, it's an awesome movie, but not for this list. If you like what I'm doing here, why don't you head on over to patreon.com slash feudnation and throw me a dollar or two so I can keep the lights on. I also have t-shirts. You can buy a Movie Feuds t-shirt or a... Feud Nation t-shirt if you'd like, you can do that. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I'll throw some links at the end, make it easy on you. All you have to do is click them or go in the description below. Apparently I'm dying now. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. I got a clever ending this week? No, okay, my script's down there.